It's fished every day and in nearly every ocean on the planet. An immense volume is captured and processed to keep up with the insatiable global demand. It's served in trendy restaurants around the world and in tin cans for school lunches. They're among the most valuable commodities in the ocean. It's tuna, yellowfin, big eye, albacore and skipjack. Four and a half million tons of tuna are caught each year and nearly half of the global supply is caught in the Western and Central Pacific. It's a $5 billion a year industry and an economic lifeline for dozens of small island nations. But for how much longer? People consider the ocean an endless bounty, but the ocean is far from unlimited. Technology is making it much easier to catch tuna, and that in turn is threatening a whole way of life. The Pacific is so dependent on these fisheries resources that a collapse could be devastating, and it might be decades for them to recover from that, if at all. The fisheries of the Western and Central Pacific cover 40 million square kilometers. It's a vast area populated by small island countries, which, according to international law, own all of the fish within 200 miles of their coastline but most countries can't afford Navy ships or aircraft to patrol their waters, leaving their prized fishing grounds a target for ocean thieves. 17 of the countries are part of an alliance that help manage and protect their most valuable asset, fish. Based on the Solomon Islands, a multinational task force for the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency is tracking some 2,000 commercial ships that are operating within the jurisdiction of the Pacific Island countries. It's an interesting track. It's not licensed, so it should not be doing those tracks. This is definitely not innocent passage. Each ship transmits a signal that is similar to an aircraft transponder, which provides vital clues as to whether the boat is operating legally. As you can see at the front window there, the first fishing contact, which is right of 4-2 on my plot. Despite these efforts, in the past 10 years, overall catch rates, both illegal and legitimate, have more than doubled. And while skipjack are still abundant, the prized bluefin is already overfished and big eye and yellowfin stocks are declining. That's why the UN Development Programme has worked with small island countries to bring in a fisheries convention and to manage fish stocks. Andrew Hudson is an ocean management expert with UNDP. But the good news is the Pacific Island countries have taken concrete steps toward improving their understanding of the, the fisheries, uh, improving and putting in place management regimes and, and monitoring and compliance regimes that if they carry them forward in full, which I think they're capable of doing, could, could lead to true sustainability for those fisheries going forward. Managing the tuna fisheries depends upon knowing more about what tuna do in the ocean. Researchers for the Secretariat of the Pacific Community are tagging thousands of tuna with devices that will provide important data. Tags tell scientists how far tuna travel, how fast they grow, and how deep they go for food. The tagging essentially allows the tuna to talk to scientists, who will use the information to protect them from being overfished. Yeah. This one was in 2011 and we receive it only now. More than 60,000 tags have been released. Nowhere are people more protective of their fisheries than in the Western and Central Pacific. It's a way of life. It defines their culture. It's how islanders make their living and feed their families. And without it, everything falls apart. In the coastal village of Noro in the Solomon Islands, the morning commute consists of islanders boarding the company van bound for the Sol Tuna processing plant. How many tons for today? 60 tons. 25-year-old Hati Matamaru is one of 1,700 Solomon Islanders making a living at the plant. That's really good, yeah, nice cleaning, maintaining this one, it's really good. Here, 100 metric tons of tuna are skinned, deboned, processed, canned and packaged every single day. This canary, it's really important to, to the people here, to the lives, to their families, 
and to the surrounding communities as well. We are worried if the tuna stock is gone, yeah, because the job here depends very much on the fish that we have in our waters. The same tuna that provide jobs at the Sol Tuna Processing Plant also keep a small fleet of Solomon fishing boats working. Okay, guys, stand by. Go. The Solomon Ruby is heading to sea in the hopes of catching 350 metric tons of skipjack tuna. Solomon Emerald, Solomon Emerald, copy. Fishmaster Junior De Liberata grew up in the Solomons and commands a crew of his fellow islanders. He says technology has become an essential tool in the boat cockpit. It's quite easier now when uh, there's, there's a spot of fish uh, 100 meters away. The sonar can tell you the density of the fish, how many tons there is, how deep it is and how far it is. It's not long before a large school of tuna are spotted and the crew races to lay nets and gather the catch. Before long, hundreds of tons of tuna start coming up over the rail. But this kind of modern technology is a double-edged sword. As a Pacific Islander myself, I would ask one question. Will the next generation enjoy this industry as we do now? It's so very easy to catch fish. That's the worrying part. More boats, more fish harvested from the sea. For now, the Western and Central Pacific is still the most productive fishery on the planet. But the risk of depleting stocks of tuna sends a signal that has to be heeded. We know very well now, and the ocean is telling us very clearly, that we need to find more sustainable approaches to ocean utilization. We know the oceans are talking to us. Their message is, that if we listen, they will continue to provide for generations to come.